Good morning. This is David Williams. I'm here with Meredith Oliver. How are you doing today, Meredith? Hey, I'm doing great. How are you? Fine. Thank you. It's good to have you with me. Um, what we're going to do is I'm just going to have you do a brief intro. And then at the end, I'll have you do a more detailed with your social media or website. So briefly tell us who you are and what you do, and then we'll dive into a conversation. Yeah, great. So uh, I'm Meredith Oliver. I live right here in Raleigh, North Carolina, but I work all over the country and specifically I'm a sales and marketing strategist. So I help businesses grow their business with sales and marketing, mostly in the digital marketing space. So that's going to help me dive into a conversation because uh, digital marketing, as you know, has become a word over the last few years and it actually gets, I mean, it's becoming more and more popular because people will say I'm a digital agency or I run a digital agency. So me being an entrepreneur, self-employed, I love sales and marketing. I enjoy that. I honestly, just about as much as I do the photography portion. So I, I think we're going to have a great conversation this morning. So I want you to talk about what sales and marketing looks like and, and dig, the digital part of it and how you uh, direct your clients. And then we want to, you know, Talk about some things. When times are good, obviously you see marketing going a different direction, but then maybe the economy slumps or something happens. And my experience is that a lot of people will want to, oh, I'm going to cut my marketing dollars, right? It's like, where can I cut money? So I'm going to cut my marketing dollars, which seems to me to be counterintuitive. But uh, go ahead and, and open us up with a little bit of conversation about what that looks like. And I'll drop some notes and then probably come back with, hey, can you expand on this more? So the floor is yours. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, so, you know, what's interesting is I've been advocating for digital marketing for almost 20 years, right? So I came right out of college and went to work for a dot-com, and this was during the dot-com boom. So it was, you know, really fun times, crazy times. They gave me stock options instead of a salary which was cool in the boom when the stock was $120 <laughs> right. uh, each. But then when the uh, head of the company went to prison because it was the wild west back then, uh, it wasn't worth so much. So yeah, so I kind of came to my career during the time when the internet really went crazy and I've been advocating for it ever since. And what's interesting is in the last couple of months, as we've shifted into a much more uh, distance, remote, virtual communication, doing like these Zoom meetings and things. It's like everything I've been telling people to do all this time is they're getting it. They're like, oh, we have to do these things. Yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So um, I love digital marketing. I love everything about it. There, sometimes people aren't quite sure what I mean by that or what it is. And so it's when you use, say, Google search to make sure that you can, your business can easily be found when prospective customers are looking for your either category of service or your specific product. Digital marketing is also things like using social media to build relationships with people who are current customers and potential future customers. Digital marketing, things like blogging, it's things like doing a Zoom cast or a podcast, email marketing. I mean, it's really any kind of form of communication, making people aware of what you do, why you do it through a digital virtual type of platform. That's, that is it. So traditional marketing is more your signage and your flyers and those uh, print ads, things that we, we still do some of, right? But the digital side is where we particularly focus. So with speaking of that digital side of things, you know, one of the things that you mentioned in there is from a cost perspective. Now, obviously, because you do this for a living, I, I get the importance of a consultant, you know, so I, I, I value paying people for their time. I think the most that I've personally ever paid anybody for their time was $350 an hour, but that was many years ago. I, I hired a guy for several hours, but that $350 an hour for several hours ended up helping me get to another level. So I say that because what I'd like for you to do is 
obviously social media is free for the most part, right? People yeah, can push right. that digital message out free. So somebody that uh, hires a consultant, a little bit about what that may, may look like and how a consultant is going to guide you versus the person that says, you know, I can do it for free. And there's nothing wrong with that because when times are tight, people have to make decisions that, you know, oh, I wish I could hire somebody, but I'm, I'm just going to do it on my own. So give me some advice on both sides of that. You know, what, sure. what working with a consultant looks like and, oh, I can do this for free. So what that might look like, some of the things that maybe a two or three tips that you would say, okay, if you're going to do it on your own, I get it. You know, here's a couple key points that I think you should really focus on. Yeah. So I say all of the time that some digital marketing tactics are DIY, do it yourself friendly, and are actually more effective when you do it yourself. And then there are other tactics that you should absolutely not be doing. You'll do more harm than good, right? So we can separate them into two categories. Uh, social media is a good example of one that is fairly do it yourself friendly and coming from you real time on the ground uh, behind the scenes of your company uh, giving shout outs to your customers to your vendor partners all of that kind of very organic relationship oriented content really does best when it comes directly from you you can outsource some of your social media marketing strategy, some of the content creation, and there's some benefits to that if that's possible in your budget, but it's not a requirement. Whereas contrast that with say managing Google ads or doing Google search engine optimization. Those are two areas that you should not be trying to do yourself. And there are some consultants and trainers out there that have books and courses to teach you to do your own SEO. And I am vehemently against that because if you do something that Google finds displeasing, you'll get yourself blacklisted right out of the algorithm. And then you'll find yourself trying to get back in favor with Google. And if anybody like has the phone number out there to just call up Google and talk to them and work things out, I'd really appreciate it. You give it to me because I don't have it after all these years. <laughs> there, you know, there is no just call them up, particularly on the organic SEO side. Now Google ads has pretty good customer service support, but even Google ads, many years ago, I used to tell companies all the time, you could do your Google ads, not anymore. It's incredibly complex. You'll end up spending more for every click because you don't <laughs> know what you're doing, right. right? Right, so like the way we're structured, I have one person that's their entire job is to stay on top of, familiar with Google organic SEO rules and algorithm. That's her job. And then I have a whole nother specialist whose job is to know Google ads inside and out. Right. So like if you think about that, these are people that are spending their full time job doing it and they still don't even have all the answers. Right. How can you, the business owner, think you're going to stay on that? So that's like that's an example of what you're talking about. Some things do it yourself. Absolutely. Other things you don't want to go there. That was a, a very good example because I could see like I'm on the fly. I'm at a photo shoot as a photographer. Hey, you know, I take a clip because Meredith, my consultant is not there with me. And what's wrong with me? Like snapping a picture and saying, Hey, you know, right. here's where I'm at, you know, and yes. uh, some kind of an update. So that makes a very and good. You want to. Oh yeah. Yeah. And you want yeah. to be that like immediate, here's where I'm at and get that going on. Obviously, there's still huge value in having someone that understands the social media platforms and email marketing and all that. So I get it. And just to piggyback on what you were saying, just so you'll know, because you may not be aware of this part uh, of, of our business, but uh, we do Google AdWords, but I have a Google AdWords guy that I've known, I think since 2006, it's been yep. somewhere that long. So I've got like a 10 plus year relationship with him. Uh, we've been doing AdWords for years, but I've seen that in my time get more and more complex. And I'll be honest with you, I do not want to do it on my own. Now, I do have the app 
and the app has got more intuitive. And what that does for me as a business owner is how many clicks, you know, how much money am I spending? And, and then maybe I can hit my AdWords guy up and say, Hey, you know, what's going on, you know, things. Cause there was a situation recently where, you know, I hit him up and he'll, Oh, this is what happened. And he was able to explain it. I, I don't want to take time out of my day you know, trying to figure out, okay, where is the problem and what's going on? So I get, you know, what you're saying from a business owner perspective. So that's some great advice. What we're going to do now is we're going to kind of like wind down a little bit. So, and it may hit us in a different direction as we begin to uh, bring it home, so to speak. But what are some key points that in addition to what you've already shared, what are some things you'd like to leave people with uh, that are thinking about sales and marketing, whether they, you know, want to try to take some stuff on themselves or hire someone, what are some of your tips? Some of the things, well, specifically what I would like for you to speak to, and I'm, I'm getting, uh, the thoughts are coming in my head specifically briefly speak to me about your experience with when the economy kind of is like slowing down. Do you see people pulling back on their marketing budget and, and what's your thoughts in that arena? So although I was headed one direction, I quickly shifted because I'd love to you to speak to that because yeah. um, I try not to do that. And, and it's very hard if business is not as usual and the economy is not as usual. But it, and so I've heard those stories of, oh, yeah, they're going to cut their marketing budget. So talk to me a little bit about that. Yeah, I I've been through three major business disruptions in my career now. I've uh, been through 9-11, that was a business disruption. Uh, been through 2008, that was a major business disruption. And now the disruption that we're currently in. And I, what I find is there's, uh, there are two different philosophies. And what's important obviously is always cash flow for the business. Right. So if you are in a position that you can manage cash flow, then keeping your marketing going is absolutely the best way to go, particularly if it is a short term disruption. And to me, that's really what you've got to assess is are is this short term or long term? And if it's going to be short term and you can maintain your business and run the business short term without that immediate sale coming in every day, then keep the marketing going. You might reduce how much you're spending. Maybe you're spending a thousand dollars a month on Google ads. Maybe you bring it down to 750 a month or 500, but you still keep yourself out there. Because what we're finding is with every disruption as the years trek forward, our use of technology never has gone down. It's only <laughs> increased. That, yep, that's a very good point. And so as we are dealing with these various things, as they happen, there are more people on mobile phones. There are more people on Google. There are more people on Facebook than ever before. This is where we quote unquote, hang out right. and that's where you want your shingle for your business hanging out so that when the disruption is over you're top of mind you know but i get it i get it that if you're in a position where you didn't have that budgeted and set aside for the year and it really is dependent on every sale coming in for you to have the money to spend it well then you can't do it i mean it's right so right. i get i'm a business owner i get it uh, but definitely continuing to market. But here's really what's most important. Isn't whether you spend money or don't spend money. It's that you assess your message and adapt your message as needed, right? So my whole philosophy, what I talk about is this thing called fantastic marketing. I've written books on it. I speak on it internationally, keynote, workshops, and it's where you put the fans first, right? Fantastic marketing. So you put your, yourself in the shoes of your customer. How is your customer thinking, feeling? What are they experiencing? What are their behaviors right now? And how can your product or service adapt to meet them where they are? And if you'll give the fans what they want, if you'll meet them where they are, if you'll make your messaging, your product, your service about them and not about you, the brand or the company or the service, 
it will go so much further without having to spend as much because the engagement on your social media, the open rate on your emails, the click through rate on your Google ads will be through the roof because people will go, they get me. That is exactly how I feel right now. And that can help me. So that's what we want. We want to make an emotional connection with our customer, current customers, prospective customers that you get them, you're paying attention. And when you do that, it's really quite magical what will happen and the business will grow. It will grow. That is a, that's some very great closing advice because <laughs> you know, where I was headed was like, you know, when I first started this segment a moment ago, I was like, well, give us some two or three kind of closing remarks. And then I thought, Oh, when business is kind of in a slump or the economy's in a slump, what do people do? And that sent you down this path of <laughs> what you just shared. And I think that's a great way to close out our segment together. Nice. I love the fan F A N, right? I would think of right. capitalizing that fantastic right. marketing um, and keeping others, you know, first makes a, a good point. People want to know that you are, in this with them that you understand what's going on and so that uh, makes a, a lot of sense and so and you also gave some good advice i'm glad you expanded on it um, everybody has not set their marketing budget or side or even if they have times might get so tough they have to deep into you know dip into it but i think you know some of your advice in there was keep marketing, but maybe you're not spending as much. So that was some great advice as well. Well, it's been a pleasure having you share this information today. What I'd like for you to do now is I'm giving you permission to market and sell for just a moment because <laughs> I want you to tell people what's your website, you know, maybe talk about one of the books that you've written, uh, how to find you on social, whatever you'd like to share in these closing remarks, uh, go for it. And then I also try to put you know, a link to your website in the description Great. of the video as well as a podcast. But go ahead now and get a little deeper on who you are and what you do and how people can find you. Yeah, so definitely uh, our website is meredithcommunications.com, meredithcommunications.com. Uh, on the website there, you'll find a blog. We blog every week, at least once or twice a week. Uh, the blog is packed with free tips and tricks on anything digital marketing. So you can get a lot of good resources there. Uh, did, I do have two books right now on Amazon, Fantastic Marketing and Fantastic Selling. If you want a paperback copy, you can find those there. In the spirit of what I was just talking about though, uh, to illustrate the point, if you're good with a PDF, then just reach out to me through my, my website or reach out to David, get my email. And I'd be happy to send you the PDF with my compliments because that's what we do is we put other people first and we make it about them and you start to build relationships. So, you know, that that's an easy thing to do for me. If you want to find me on social media, I'm everywhere on social media. <laughs> so uh, Facebook, Meredith Communications, LinkedIn, Meredith Oliver, Instagram. Now, Instagram, David's my fun one because that is my shoe channel. <laughs> yep. And, and yes. I'm familiar with that one. And I know we didn't even talk about the shoes in this segment. I know. I am a shoe person and I have a shoe gram Instagram channel where I post pictures of my shoes. So Meredith's Shoes 22 will get you to my Instagram. And then of course, Twitter, YouTube, I've got videos, all the, all the works. So I would love to get to know you better, to get connected with you, to build a relationship with you. And if there's something we could do to help grow your business with digital marketing, let us know. It's been a pleasure having you, Meredith Oliver. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you.